So to just get everyone on the same page, I'll start a little bit about a reminder of, of, of what Khan Academy does. All these interactions are just through the gravity. This is an age right after Isaac Newton. And you can just see the pleasure he had. Can you determine which light bulb is being switched? I'm told the humidity makes it feel hotter. Why is this? Excellent question, LeBron. And I can keep playing around with these numbers and see what kind of colors I can come up with. Two things actually can interbreed, although for these two in particular, it seems like the mechanics would get kind of difficult. <laughs> but, but it's not just videos. Actually, most of what we're focused on is, our, is the interactive side of Khan Academy. Uh, what you see here is actually our computer science platform, which was developed by one of the top so uh, computer scientists on the planet, John Resig. And it's really to show students of all ages the, the, the creative side of programming. And we've seen it used by kindergartners all the way up to graduate students to do sophisticated simulations. The meat of what we have been working on, this is what most of the team's been working on, is really the interactive platform. Our mission is a free world-class education for anyone, anywhere. And we think that doesn't happen unless you get deep practice, you get feedback. And so what we're really doing is we're using state-of-the-art analytics so that students get that feedback, get that practice, and we have tools for teachers so that they can keep track of, of where the, the students actually are. And since uh, that talk at TED uh, three years ago, the, the scale has gotten uh, to some degree even, even crazier for us. Up to that point, we had reached about 7 million users. Uh, up to today, we've reached about 140 million users. At that time, uh, we were about, reaching about a million students per month. We're now reaching about 10 million students per month. And the number of problems uh, that are, have been done on Khan Academy, as you see, is rapidly approaching 2 billion. And oh. the, we've, as, as uh, the last TED Talk highlighted, a lot of what's interesting about what we're doing is, is what's happening inside of classrooms. And we've started to see some really, really interesting results. And I don't want to give any, anyone the impression that Khan Academy is somehow a silver bullet that you can just drop into a classroom and, and everything's going to be perfect. But when in, use conjunct when in conjunction with amazing teachers who can really set the right culture for students to take ownership and really direct their own learning, we have seen some pretty incredible things happening. These are the percentile scores for a ninth grade algebra class in Oakland, California. And this is actually a class, even if you go a few years before 2011, they were in the 20th percentile in the state of California. And their most recent test scores, not only are they in the 99th percentile, there's only nine algebra classes that in all of California that are, that are outperforming them. And But what we remind ourselves is still 90% of the users out there are just people trying to tap into their own potential. And uh, to, to us, this, this, this next video exemplifies that. So I actually uh, dropped out of high school twice, um, both during my freshman year. Um, and when I eventually came back, I was put in sort of lower level math and science classes because I was so behind. Um, then I discovered Khan Academy. Um, and I was able to skip two years worth of math just through using the site. And I came into school, I took the exam with students who had been enrolled in the class all year, and I was actually able to get the highest or the second highest scores in the class. Um, so for me, Khan Academy really changed the trajectory of my entire life. Um, because without it, I don't think I ever really would have been inspired to, to learn and to love math and to love science. Um, I ended up graduating as a valedictorian and going on to Princeton, where I'm now a computer science major, and I'm absolutely passionate about learning about computers, about math, about science. And at that time, I don't think that these things would really matter to me the way that they do today. So I'd just like to say a massive thank you to everyone at Khan Academy, Saul and the team. Um, please keep doing the good work that you're doing, because you're really changing lives. And, and it's actually since come full circle, when we found out he's a computer science major, we said we have internships. <laughs> and he interviewed, and he actually rocked all the rounds of the interviews, and he's actually now going to join us this summer uh, to build the tools for, for, frankly, the next generation of Charlies. So we're very, very excited about that. Uh, this is an announcement that came out only a few weeks ago. Uh, the, the College Board announced in 2016 they're going to have a new SAT. 
Uh, but part of that, kind of the first time in history, the College Board recognized that, look, there is this inequity, at least a perceived inequity, around people having access to test prep, being able to optimize their score and, and really put their best foot forward. So this is something they had never done before, extremely exciting for Khan Academy. What we're going to be doing is collaborating with them, sharing items, really working together, vetting content to make the best test prep available. And this won't just be your classic test prep. This will not just be how to game the exam, how to guess appropriately, test taking strategies. It's really about state of the art tools for deep practice, analytics, and feedback. And I think working together, we're, we are really going to be able to, to level this playing field a little bit. The, uh, other uh, thing that uh, ha has happened since the last TED Talk is we've expanded beyond essentially our world, the English-speaking world, the, the developed world. Uh, we start internationalizing. There's a fully Spanish Khan Academy. There's a Portuguese Khan Academy. Turkish, French is coming soon. All of the world's languages are our goal. And to get a sense of what this looks like, I'll show you this next video. And, you know, it's, it's kind of surreal for me that, that this, you know, this literally was uh, started in a walk-in closet. And during the last TED Talk, we were only a seven-person organization. Since then, we're now 60 people. We've had thousands of volunteers. We have 200,000 teachers using us in a classroom in some way, shape, or form. All of these are pictures of, of Khan Academy use, being used all over the planet. And what I like to think about uh, is to kind of take a step back sometimes. And, you know, go back 400 years, and if you were to observe, say, Western Europe, which even then was one of the most literate parts of the planet, you would have seen about 10 or 15% of the population could read. And if you were to ask, say, a member of the clergy, someone who could read, what percentage of the population do you think is even capable, intellectually capable of reading, they might have said maybe 30 or 40% if you had a really, really good education system. We now know that that's, that's not true. It's wildly pessimistic. The answer is actually closer to 100%. And so fast forwarding today, I like to think about what similar blinders do we have on? That right now, if you were to ask someone, what percentage of people are capable of novel research? What percentage of people can understand genetics or computer science or robotics? I think you will get an answer like 5 or 10 or 15 percent. But what if that answer is actually 100 percent? And what's exciting about the next 5, 10, 15, 50 years is I think we're going to actually be able to test those bounds and actually go beyond them where we can take this thing called education, this thing that's been scarce, it's the determinant between the haves and the have-nots, and like clean drinking water and, and, and sh basic shelter, uh, turn it into a fundamental human right. Thank you. Fantastic. So, hey, listen. Um, so you said, uh, you said that right now, like 90% of the usage of, of Khan Academy is, is not in school, it's kind of individual use. If you were to put on your futurist hat and, and roll the clock forward, I don't know, say 20 years, when all the good thinking that you're introducing to the world and others are, it plays out. What does education look like then? Does it happen mainly in homes? Does it still happen in schools with teachers and classrooms? How, do, how does it happen, do you think? I think there will always be classrooms, but I think the nature of them will be much more self-directed, much more interactive. It won't be about lecture anymore. It'll be about a community of learners taking ownership of their learning, and frankly, using things like Khan Academy for the core skills, but then building portfolios, things like our computer science platform, writing, so that your transcript isn't just your scores, but it's also what you've made. Well, you're doing as much as anyone in the world to realize that future. All power to you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you.